Hello everyone! Welcome to the first episode for Divinity Original Sin 2, a game I've been waiting for a long time, I'm sure a lot of us have, uh, to finally dive in. And for this playthrough, we're going to be playing as one of the pre-made characters, the Red Prince. Uh, so let's jump into the single player. Uh, there is also multiplayer and also a really cool mode that I'd like to try out at some point. Uh, we have the arena, which is a PvP mostly focused, um, just arena battle mode. And then a game master, which changes the game into basically like a Dungeons and Dragons session, which also sounds kind of cool. But we'll get to that probably later. Uh, for right now, we're going to jump into the single player mode. These are all the difficulties. Basically, very easy, medium, hard, and then Iron Man mode. So, if your characters die in honor mode, which is the difficulty of tactician mode, which I guess is hard, your save file is erased and you gotta start the game over again. Which, you know, kudos to you if you want to play the game like that, but this is a very long, I'm assuming, I'm assuming this is gonna be a very long RPG, because Divinity 1 was as well. Um, so, I'm not gonna do that, but, you know, if you want to do that, go for it. Iron Man mode, there you go, but we're just gonna go for the classic mode, which is gonna be the normal difficulty. Because, I don't know. I don't want it to be super, super challenging. Uh, you can actually see the red prince right here in this loading screen. This person right there, the Lizard Man. So it's really cool. A lot of cool things just about the character creation. This is as far as I've gotten into the game. I just wanted to look around the settings. So we have multiple races. We have the dwarves, the human... I'm sorry, the elves. Who, Which, like, look at these elves. Which, they look kind of pretty cool. Not just the generic looking elves. They got, like, part tree bark. I'm not entirely sure. Um, then we also have human, and then lizards, and then we all- ooh, she looks really cool. Then we have the undead, which is just gonna be the undead version of the dwarves, the elves, the humans, and the lizards. So that's also really cool. And from what I've understood, or what I've gleaned from trailers, if you play undead, people are gonna be very upset that you're an undead character, so you kinda have to hide it. There's a lot of cool little features like that in the game, from what I understand, and what's gonna assist in that is this tag system. So if you're creating a generic character, I'm gonna, well, a custom character, let's call them, then you are going to tag yourself with up to two different tags, and I believe this is how the NPCs are going to react to you. So as a barbarian jester, or barbarian noble, I'm assuming this will create different dialogue choices throughout the game. And this is how you can kind of create your own background, because besides the just uh, custom character, <laughs> Try that again. Custom characters that you can make. There are also pre-made characters with their own origin stories and with their own set of tags. So you can you can either do the preset or make your own. And what's really cool too, there's so many cool things, just in the character creation screen. They all have origin stories for the presets. So like let's take a look at this one. Hmm. I was just thinking about someone I used to know. My cousin. The Queen, in fact. A tyrant. I tried to stop her, but things don't always go according to plan. She cast me out to a forgotten island, and made short work of my allies, too. Lucky for me, I was able to commandeer a ship, and began a new life for myself, out on the high seas. Aye, but I hear that the Queen is at it again. And there's something darker behind our madcap schemes this time. If I don't stop her, I don't know who will. That's pretty cool. And each one of the presets have that type of origin story. So we can also go back to Thane, which is going to be the undead person who has been created with an origin story. We have Ifan Ben Mez, Mezed. Uh, Los, the Red Prince, and then Sabil, who is um, an escaped slave, which she sounds also pretty cool. The Red Prince, you know, let's just listen to their origin story so you know the character we're going to be playing. Not, not a nice guy, nice lizard. Famed, of course, for my unique red skin and unparalleled skills as a general of the House of War, I, the Red Prince, was raised within the vast palaces of the fabled Forbidden City. I was destined to become the next Emperor. But my ambitions suffered a bit of a setback when I fell from grace for cavorting with demons. Now, I'm exiled and hunted by assassins. 
but I assure you, I remain undaunted and as determined as ever to claim my rightful throne. So not the voice that uh, you were probably expecting from the Red Prince. Uh, at least I wasn't the first time I heard it. So yeah, we're going to be playing as the Red Prince. Now, even though we're picking a specific character, we can still go into the presets. We can edit their attributes, their starting abilities, and their skills. I'm going to go with the preset abilities of the Conjurer set, which is going to give us a Elemental Summon, a Dimensional Bolt, which is, it looks like a direct damage spell, uh, let's see, fortify damage of a random type and then creates a corresponding surface. There's a lot of spells in this game that can react differently to different surfaces like water, uh, poison surfaces, fire surfaces, light, like all this stuff. We'll get into that later. Um, and then an elemental totem, that is going to be our starting three skills. But again, if we want to, we can go in here at any point. We can say forget summoning altogether. We'll go into the necromancer tree and then we can pick skills from the necromancer tree. So we can hit confirm, then we go out down to skills here. And then now, look at that, we have the Necromancer's Tree that we can select up to uh, three different abilities for. So it's all whatever you want it to be, even the appearance, even though he's called the Red Prince. I th oh, actually, I guess you are forced to use the Red. He is called the Red Prince, after all. Uh, but we can change the face of the Red Prince. Ooh, actually, I kind of like that. I think about it. Oh, ooh. Hey. I wasn't going to mess around with uh, the, this, but... I kind of like that. Yeah. Um, and then for the custom characters, you can go through a preset of series of different voices, but for the actual made people, they have their own voice, which is also pretty cool. Yeah, I like, I like that look. Let's, let's do that one. Uh, origin, let's just kind of reset this back to what it was. There we go. So again, we're going to be a conjurer, and that's it. Let's start the game. Yes. Yes? Oh, sorry. I thought there was something I was missing, and there definitely is. Talents, that's one thing, but that's not what I was missing. Instruments. So, you get to select the instrument that's going to take the lead during fights and will highlight various moments of your adventure. So, we can have this uh, bansuri. Tambura. How cool is that? You get to choose which instrument's going to actually be highlighted in the in the battles and stuff. That's pretty cool. I would have never thought to put that in a game, but that's really cool. I'm going to choose the cello. Because it's kind of deep and Red prince -y. I don't know. And then we can take a look at the tags here. For the preset characters, you have to go, I believe, with their origins. So we're going to be a noble scholar. Intelligent and curious chapter for learning far exceeds for your taste for bloodshed. Books and scrolls are your dearest possessions. And again, I think this is how NPCs react to you. Also, we are a lizard of the ancient empire. We are male. And we're the infamous warrior general exiled from his empire. So that's really cool. I have not got this far. Everything from this point on is new to me. It all happened like I knew it would. A single drop of source magic. And like flies to honey, the monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the Magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. Oh, that's us. Those are the pre-made characters. Oh, cool. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. Wait, who? But instead, I became part of their story. Oh, that must be us. We are the Godwoken. Probably.
You must be sleeping. <laughs> Everything is black. Oh, okay, that was weird. My story thus far. Oh, everything spick and span. Find myself it's exiled from my empire and being transported to Fort Joy, where sorcerers are incarcerated. I should look for a lizard dreamer on this island if there is one to be found. My sleep has been plagued by strange dreams, so perhaps a dreamer can help me. Though he has a sorcerer and wears a source collar, Bishop Alexander, Alexander, Alexander continues to lead the Divine Order, as he is the son of Lucian, and it is widely assumed he will succeed him as the next Divine. So one of the other pre-made characters actually wants to kill the son of Lucian. Huh. Alright. Lucian the Divine, champion of the Seven Gods and savior of Rivalon, is dead. He sacrificed himself to defeat the forces of the Void, leaving his son Alexander to preside over the next chapter of Rivalon's history. But Lucian's sacrifice did not buy peace. Instead, the years that followed were plagued by the menace of Void Woken. These beasts were drawn to source magic and left death and destruction in their wake. Incapable of wielding the divine powers that his father had at his disposal, Alexander has resorted to harsher measures in order to stop the Void Woken. A great pogrom of has commenced against sorcerers those who show the most skill in the manipulation of Source. Encouraged by his most trusted advisor, Dalis, Alexander has decreed that all sorcerers must be resettled in isolated colonies, where they cannot pose a threat to the rest of Rivalon. One such colony is the ancient island stronghold of Fort Joy. It is to this place that I, a captive sorcerer, am being sent. Troubled Waters. We are sorcerers being transported to Fort Joy, an ancient fortress on a remote island where magistrates... Yeah, okay. I am bound by a magical collar that cannot be removed. Alright, so that's all the stuff going on right now. Got it. What is this? Character can no longer use source magic or receive source points. Well, that's not cool. Grinning Skull. Oh, an actual a Grinning Skull. Par cranium, that. Human, no wonder. <laughs> the indignity. I'm supposed to send people down to the dungeons, not the other way round. I'm glad there's some voices for this. Okay, well, you we just straight up took that. Do we need laboratory stuff? Probably not, that's just gonna weigh us down. You can see your weight up here. Uh, let's see, we have too long presumed Source as a virtuous part of civil society, yet we need look no further into the past than the Source King's reign to understand the havoc such magics may wreak. One day, another order must be followed in the Source Hunter's footsteps. Sorcerers can, must, be muted. The new model of Source Callers provided by Vredramon is proving most effective. No marks. No okay. I don't think we need that anymore. Now, if I remember correctly, if there is, like, um... Can we just move this, like, hold and drag? Yeah! So, if you've never seen Divinity Original Sin before the first one, like, you can stack crates on each other and create, like, you know, little barriers and stuff. It's, it's pretty cool. There's a lot of cool stuff in these games. Anyway. Ah, you're up. Yes. Looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. There. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. Hmm. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. I wonder if every enemy seek and trade. Drag items you wish to buy or sell into the barter window. Balance the offer by pressing the scales. No, Confirm no transaction. Associates. In fact, he seemed quite averse. I think this is the UI I used for the first game. It looks very familiar. Although it has been quite some time since I have seen it. Alright. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. You pull at the thing around your neck uh, futilely. Demand to know why she called you. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. Ah, because you're the Red Prince. You recall the power building inside you, the stare that enthralled a demon. Unleash it. 
Okay. Currents of magic surge inside you, boiling, bursting, then breaking, only to fade back into your soul like rain into the earth. Interesting. They even have a narrator voice in this game. Cool. My, look at the concentration on your face. All will, but no result. Hey now, my will is strong. There you have it, see? The collars function. It neuters you, of sorts. Makes you unable to cast source. Hmm. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world. Ah! Wow, so we have multiple choices here because of our tags. Our hashtag scholar and hashtag noble. Muse at the room's shape, you can tell you're on a Lucian-class frigate, but why? why? Because we're at sea, of course, and have been for several days. Index fingers pressed to her lips, she pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. I like this. I like this narrator. My word. You do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. A new life awaits. And mm. if you are a particularly good boy, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. Okay. Trouble, troubled waters. Okay, we have been told to look for Manchester William at the stern of a ship in order to be registered. Perhaps we can explore a little before we go to him. Sure. Or maybe we should look at the ancient. <clears throat> oh, okay, okay, yeah, they they didn't like that. Sorry. There's, there's been a murder here. <laughs> That's just not the voice I'd imagine this list would do that. Um, so that's Magister Waters? Mm. Okay. Um, probably can't grab that. Hello? Behind the Magister, a bloodied mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. The Red Prince doesn't get sick, please. At least doesn't let people know he gets sick. There's been a murder. A sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. I think we should probably go with the Red Prince options like every time. It's who we are. Tell him you wouldn't trust the Magister to get to the bottom of a butter dish. Harsh. If you have nothing to hide, <laughs> I'm sure it'll go just fine. Bloody lizard. Very harsh. Uh, so we need to find Williams, right? Okay. So let's talk to this Magister. A young Magister stands pale and silent. Her knuckles whiten around her weapon as you pass. Okay, well, we won't talk to her then. Waters! Ugly sight, isn't it? It is. What do you have to trade? Let's get down to the important stuff. Pepper. Hmm, alright. Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. Hmm. Hmm. Sure. She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. Oh, we went with two, by the way. Oh, sorry. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. The Red Prince needs his beauty sleep. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Well, let me tell you. Let's see, because we're a lizard, say you don't hail from the House of Dreams. When you sleep, you truly sleep. Figured as much. Okay. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Do we want to help our captors, though? So I'm going to try and roleplay this. If you've never seen me play a roleplaying game before, I try to roleplay the character. And our overall goal is to become the Emperor of the Lizard's Lands, right? So we're not really necessarily a good Samaritan. We would only help if it gets us further. And the justification of helping a captor is so that they would like us more so that maybe we can get away with something later. Hmm. Yes. Bring me a good lead. And I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about oh, that? 
An entire gold coin? Oh, thank you, Magister Waters. Hmm. The Red Prince would be arrogant. He is a noble. Yeah, our price is considered to be higher Not than in that. Here it isn't. Well... You let me know if you hear anything. Whoever did this is dangerous. I'm dangerous. How about you take this collar off me that we can see is really dangerous. If you want to learn more skills, you need to find or buy skill books. Skills belong to various categories or skill schools. Okay. Okay. Anyway, Trouble Waters. Uh, fellow sorcerer's been discovered murdered. We've been told we receive a gold piece as reward if we bring back evidence. No marks. No indications of a storm. Hmm. Alright. That goes up to the deck. Uh, let's go over here. Come on. Please, Lord Charles. This again. <laughs> you know, if this were a noble and an ex-general, I don't think they would be caught dead wearing this. I mean, we could just take off the visibility, but we would still be wearing it, so we're going to unequip that. Again, we're going to be role-playing, and he's not going to wear a damn bucket on his head. Oh, we'll take a bedroll. You pick up a bedroll. Use it to rest and heal your party. Understood. Hello? Well, there we go. We just got seven gold pieces from a random barrel worth more than even solving this murder mystery. Uh, hello. An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. Ah, it's one of the other pre-made characters. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. Can I join she you? She shakes her head. Well, all right then. Game for one. I'm afraid. Rolling dice? Deciding fates. Let's go with two. She eyes you quite seriously. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it, too. Oh? I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? Hmm. That's a good point. We do not know where her tongue has been, though. We can't just let anybody randomly tongue our arm. Mm. She chuckles once more. That red-cheeked refusal tells me more than licking you would. But, suit yourself, darling. Hmm. She smiles yeah, we'll take contemptuously. Leave. Just a kitten in a corner, aren't we? I'm a pretty big kitten. You are chill, aren't you? I'll take a mug of beer I ain't and a bottle of beer. So we can usually drink those and give us some what kind of buff for a debuff. I'll what a beast! A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? Boy? Yeah, I think we gotta go with one. He opens both eyes and turns his head toward you, looking you up and down. He smiles and closes his eyes once more. You look like a boy to me. <clears throat> Listen, if you're interested. Or get gone if you aren't. Okay, what am I meant to be hearing? A ship, of course. Sure. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates. The groaning of wood from floor to ceiling. The boom, crash, and crackle of waves around you. Complaints from the sea itself. There's a puppy. There's an armored puppy. And? You are chill, aren't you? I ain't saying nothing. The ship is moaning like a sick man. Sick as a leper's cat. From the state of it, I'd say she's being cared for by a bunch of beardless babes who never loved anyone but their own mums. But there's more. Listen close. Okay, mm we will go with one. There now, just like that. Oh, come on, narrator. We all want to hear you just squee. Okay, I guess not. Aha. 
His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back, the other catches you before you lose your footing. There. You heard it, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, boy. Good news. Let's ask what got him so excited. No, you beautiful idiot. That wasn't any rat. It was the wheel. Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. It's very observant of you. Pardon my beard. That means if we've been traveling for... Yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll land you right over the side of the ship with him. Hmm. Let's ask why I'm so excited. Eh, no indeed, boy. But that ain't my final destination. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, boy. Hmm. Let's go with one. Let's cock an eyebrow and see if they're hatching an escape he plan. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. Or let's just be ignored. Okay, that's fine. I remember that. Hello. My prince. Uh, yes. The cook bows slightly and wipes her hands on her gruel-stained garb. Forgive me, your highness. I didn't expect... Well, anyway, were that I had more than cornmeal and rotting roots to serve, I'd concoct something more fitting for one of your stature. Well, you've got this wolf on a leash now. Hmm. Normally I would go with reason two. But, we are playing the Red Prince here. Arrogant Noble. <sighs> I'm no time for groveling. She averts her eyes and nods quickly before returning to her duties. Grease key? What is a grease key? Nice. Okay, apparently opens that. Before we go in? A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face, he stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board and I'd bet three months' pay it's this tramp Ifan. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. Okay, so the tags are exactly what I thought they were. He dares beckon you like a common servant, sniff and pretend not to notice him. Hmm. Doesn't say Red Prince, it's just because we're a noble. But I'm more curious than anything. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Pinches less that way, right? Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifan. And now, you. Let's go with that. We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Oh? Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. His throat must be itching. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is somebody gave him a bigger sword and now he's Johnny Big Pants. <laughs> Let's go with option one. Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from interested parties. Let's just see what he says. No. Okay. The dead man, Finn, is it? I'd no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. Let's go with option one, ask about where we're headed. The joy. I've heard a lot. Nothing good. 
No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Wonder if we'll get to meet the Ringmaster himself. Well, the Divine Order did capture us. They're the ones putting a collar on us, so yeah, I think we maybe have a slight grudge. Easy now. I might think the same, but Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. What are you conspiring about over there? You, Lizard, what's your name? Oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. And that bee is me. Name? I'm the Red Prince. Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. Away with you, at once. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips as he leans back against the wall. Okay. Oh! I keep pressing Q and E to try and change the camera angle. That's why I keep opening that screen. I will take that. Never thought you'd end up a prison guard. Small poison bottle. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll take that, I guess. Where is our? Whoa! I accidentally pressed O. Well, that's cool. I have to remember that for the future. Where is our inventory? What the hell? There we go. I'm curious if this journal has anything about the murder in it. Nope. All right. The heck out of my inventory then. Artistic journal. All right, let's keep going. Or not. Let's not go that way. Your kind always hung closest to our divine. The Magisters are out for blood. You saw the body, didn't you? Big bruiser like you ought to be able to take them on. Are you talking to me? Name? Well, you aren't here on my list. Scram, eh? We're trying to catch a killer here. Okay. I did. Ah, there you are. <clears throat> husband. Yep, that's me. I'm your husband. Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think we got that. Oh, they're not so bad. At least not Aww. when they're treating me, Madam, uh, Madam Josephine Gribble de Peeve, with due deference. The children break out into giggles. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Got to keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? Mm-hmm. Mm. More concerned about survival, or shake her hand? Uh, I think we say survival. Guess you aren't a creative type, are you, Chief? I say they're one and the same. Okay. You know anything about the murder? Nope. Trying not to find anything out either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Hmm. I mean, we don't know this person, so will we ask them to watch our back? We'll take our lead. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Grayish oh. veins run down her face, and her mouth um. tightens into a cruel sneer. Uh, madam? As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Yep, definitely glad I did not ask her to wash good my luck, back. Chief. Yep, good luck to you. I'm out. Thank you for the chat. We're gone. Uh, I don't see why the Red Prince would want a teddy bear. Alright, where else can we go? I guess we can go up to here. Oh, there's another call person. 
Oh, faint. So this is the I'll undead person. In their story, they say that they wear a mask uh, to hide their features. But yeah, they are undead. The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out, flicks a finger against one of your scales, and rubs his chin. Fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. Say that to touch a prince of the Empire is to experience seven years of good fortune. He's welcome. <laughs> You're welcome for touching me. Seven years? What an infinitesimal period. Why would anyone... Again, he's undead. He can live forever. Oh. Oh dear. I seem to have crossed some cultural taboo. How... difficult. You have my apologies, lizard. I got a name. Perhaps I should demand the same from those red-cloaked humans. They laid their hands on me more than once. I am bemused. Who is this guy? Ah, yes. The niceties. My name is Fane. I am a scholar from... Well, I am a seeker of knowledge. That is enough. It is pleasurable to meet you. Hmm. Well, ask what he's seeking. Is there? Wherever do you keep it? Certainly not in your books. I have been reading this one for several minutes, and I have yet to find a single insight into the mysteries of the universe. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. Tell me, what do you know of your... our world's history? Hmm... Well, I said we probably do the Red Prince one if it comes up, so... I think, yeah. You know everything, obviously. I mean, of course we do, we're the Red Prince. Most unusual. And if it's not too rude to suggest, not much of an answer. No, I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? Hmm. Yeah, sure. Let's go with the background option. <sighs> of course you don't have any useful information. Why did I expect anything else? Now please, run along. I have a world to decipher. Yeah, we'll just shrug and leave. It's a register, sir. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. N no You faring okay so far? Hmm. Let's not be super sarcastic here. We've seen worse. Trust me, with Bishop Alexander in charge, things will get a lot better from here on out. He's god -woken, you know. Oh. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. Hold on. I feel like we have to solve this crime first, and I am no closer to solving it than I was a moment ago. Uh, let's go up here first, if we can. I kind of wish I could ins inspect the body, but since that's coming up red, I think that's a no-no. Well, need to find another way. Okay. I have not found a thing about this murder. One of them. I know it. Would you put a knuckle in it? I'm trying to concentrate. I guess we they just don't go to win. About us. We're like cattle to them. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. All right, let's just go in here. Keep those bubbles trained on her. And if she tries to run, shoot to kill. I wonder if this is the person. Officer. What on earth is the matter? Murder most foul. Standing at the center oh. of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. I'm assuming this is the person in the opening cinematic. So you admit it then? Movie. You murdered that poor fella. Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. Okay, well, mystery solved, everybody. We can go home. Got the murder she right here. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. I'll take that as a threat. Good. 
God, the woman's mad. You there, sorcerer, go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. Mm. You would want to jump to the winning side. They are armed. We are not. Let's ask the sorcerer. What's up? It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... Okay, so she definitely wants she us to die. She collar and simply oh. removes it. Okay. Nice trick. I'm just about to create a scene. So do her, man, quickly! If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely. Oh. Oh boy. I think this is one of the fights that you're supposed to lose. You know, I'm just putting that out there. Well, let's uh, rob them while we can. I guess we're not going to be registered by Ma Magister William, huh? <laughs> uh, William. Good sir, I, I, I say, can you register me? William? Hmm, doesn't seem to want to talk right now. Well, um, let's check these crates. Odd that she looked at me and, in, and basically said that I'm going to die, but then she didn't kill me. My first bow. Uh. The scales with intelligence? Okay. Take all. I'm assuming our intelligence is higher than our finesse right now. Yeah. So you probably want to use that wand. Would be my guess. Six magical, eight physical. Grants skill, shield up. Oh, did this grant skill? No. We'll wear that. Shield up is now on our bar. Restore your physical armor and magical armor of your shield. I guess things can be drained. What else do we have here? We have the bedroll. Let's move that down. Let's get like our consumables over on this side. Let's organize this stuff here. So we got the demonic stare, we got the breath, our summons, basic attack. Healing item we'll put there. Firestorm grenade is consumable, we'll put down there. Resurrection scroll, we'll put down there. Okay. I'm guessing we're gonna be seeing some combat since they're giving us weapons. Whoa, 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 camera angle. Oh, okay. Oh, no, the the puppy. Oh, I'll, I'll take that earth resonance though, whatever the heck that is. It looks like she was busy. The dwarf lies in a heap on the floor, his great beard twisted and tangled around him. He is stock still. You can't see if he's living or dead. What's this for a heartbeat? You hear a faint thud, thud, thud. He's alive, but only just. Okay. Ifan lies motionless, curled on the ground like an animal. Under his shaggy hair, you can see green eyes fluttering as if in a nightmare. A low whine escapes his lips. Let's shake him. His eyes flicker open, but he doesn't register your presence at all. Lucy. Lucy. Ifan cries out, then his eyes fall closed again. No matter how much you shake him now, he cannot be roused. Hmm. Yeah, let's take a look at the burning pile of... Burning blocked by magical armor. Really? Okay, so I'm assuming the gray is physical. The blue is magical armor? I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Alright, anyway, we have a <laughs> tomato. Great, cool. Neat. 
No, not the final dark. Not yet. Hmm. Take her by the hand and tell her to her get up. Her hand lies limp in yours. She's too weak to stand. The dice roll darkly. They're rolling for me. Okay. Let's go. What, what, Lose? Lose. The young woman lies in a heap on the floor. She's breathing normally, but her eyes are wide open, like those of a corpse. Dark, grayish black clouds swirl through them. We'll have to ask her about that, but for right now. She wake up. Stir. There was the staircase back at the room where the bad stuff happened. We'll get there, but I feel like, ooh, well, we're rich now. We got some mutton. I guess we can check the body. Ugh, I don't think we're gonna pick that one up. I'll tell you what, that woman killed these people really quickly. Oh, you're still alive. The Magister lies on the floor. Unconscious and bleeding from a dire-looking wound. Yeah, well, not my problem. Oh, can I take this now, though? Ha-ha! <laughs> Some crimes, like murdering or stealing, leave a crime scene. Even if nobody saw you commit a crime, they may stumble upon the crime scene later and start investigating? Really? <laughs> That's kind of interesting. That's neat. All right, so what is what, what's in this book? The Source King insists there are no magics too foul, even those that would block or even remove the Source within an individual. I delight in his madness. It is an invitation to manipulate all which we once believed immutable. He provides all manner of experimental subjects. The text beneath lie uh, lists a series of hexes and materials required for muting Source. Some of those objects are circled in black ink and annotated as follows. Helm, collar, mask. Add to wares. Mark item as wares to sell them in one batch. Hold left shift and press left. Oh, cool. We can mark trash. Okay. Um, we're gonna mark that as trash. I mean, we may drink the beer, so you know, I'm not gonna mark that. The bucket is obviously trash. The wine is not trash. Cool. Alright, cool. Anything else in here? Alright. I'm assuming this is still blocked? The hatch is blocked. We need to find another way. I think I know our way out, friends. Oh, I guess I could have hovered over here. Yeah, so the gray is physical, this is magical. So that means that there's a lot of stuff that can affect the amount you have. Because we even have a skill that absorbs armor back. So I'm, that's going to be something I gotta, need to get used to. I don't think that was in the first game, being able to drain armor like that. We've made it to the middle deck. The ship is badly damaged, possibly even sinking. We have to keep moving. Oh, nope. Sorry. Did not mean to actually grab that. Oh, wait. Actually, hold on. Water barrel. There we go. Tons of stuff like that in this game. Uh, revolving around the spells. I, I've seen a review of this game that mentioned someone had the rage ability on them so that they couldn't do anything, but then they cast, like, blissfulness or something, some spell that, like, cancels... It, there's a lot of cool stuff that... The hound pours desperately at its snout. It winces as it draws blood from its wet black nose and continues scratching. Because you have the pet pal talent, you can easily converse with animals. Oh. Also, now we are apparently wet. The dog notices you for the first time and snarls. The hairs on its back prickling as it lowers itself into a lunge. Hey now, puppy. Thank you, sorcerer. Uh. <laughs> cool. It sneezes suddenly and pauses at its nose once more. Can't smell. Can't breathe. Too much sauce. Too much. Too much. Please, make it stop. Oh. Aww. Aww. 
If we have the pet pal talent, I'm assuming we're not gonna go around murdering pets willy-nilly. We have some kind of connection to them. You know, we're we're one of those people that can watch a movie where hundreds of people die and we're like, eh, whatever. But then you see that puppy, and you know, that dog, you're like, that dog better not die. That's the Red Prince. I'd stop it if I could. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the dog whines and continues pawing at its nose. I should probably take a look at what our talents are. Because I failed to do that before. Skill panel? No. Tags. Talents. Characters' unique qualities. Select talents to complement your character's abilities and attributes. So we are the Pepal. We are sophisticated. Gives us fire resistance and poison resistance. We get a plus one in persuasion from spell song. I don't know what spell song is. But, okay. Ability to shape what characters can do and how well they can do it. So for personality, we are persuasive. Helps you convince characters to do your bidding and dialogues and increase how much characters like you. That's probably important for a reference. Level one, increases base attribute with strangers by five. From spell song plus one. We are a lore master. Lore Master identifies enemies and allows you to identify items. Increasing Lore Master allows you to identify more faster. To identify, using use an identifying glass and click on an item you want to identify. To examine a monster or NPC, right click on them and choose examine. Okay. Oh, oh. Yeah, that could be useful. Especially since it tells us what their resistances are too. Opportunist gives you the ability to perform attacks of opportunity. Reduces the damage from air-based attacks. Interesting. I'm gonna have to remember to do this. And, um, you know, look at all of the stats of people. Left control and click on the door to attack it. Got it. F that door. Alright, all let's do it again. Problem is, now there is fire. There we go. Can we sit down? <laughs> Can I sit down and drink this beer? Let's try this again. Hold on. This is very important. Okay, we are now drunk. What the hell does drunk do for us? Here we go. Mug of wine. Heals plus 5%. Set drunk for two turns. What does drunk do? Ah, well, whatever. Listen, we have a drinking problem. Lock picks, stained shirt. To open locked objects, use your lockpick on it. Got it. Let's equip the stained shirt. It's better than what we have right now. Oh, actually, that's much better than what we have right now. Looks wise, anyway. Journal. Eh. Uh, hello, friends. Bust of Alexander. Letter. My sweet Stephen, as I write this letter, we near the aisle. By the time the owl delivers it, I will be but a day away. I've heeded Alexander's orders, just as you said I should, but I think of Lucian often. Would the Divine have condoned this? Would, they have, would he have blessed us as we ripped children from their mothers? Can this be the only way? I feel cold. Inside and out. Of one thing I am certain. Your arms will warm me when I find you again. Rix. Well, Rix. I'm gonna sell your letter for some money. I hope you don't mind, Rix. Oh, Rix! By the fine grace, what was... He eyes the collar circling your neck and reaches a hand towards his blade. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Another sorcerer! The Magister's companion doesn't blink, frozen in place at the sight of you. That's true. We're totally not going to backstab them. Even if I knew I had to rip that thing off, I wouldn't. Some crazy banshee comes screaming through, and now we got void bugs swarming up top. Sorcerer mutiny! He whispers loudly to the other Magister. Don't just cower there, Rix. Take out your blade! 
Rix grabs his sword. Rix. shakes in the rhythm of his trembling hand. During persuasion events, you can try to persuade the person you are talking to. Depending on your answers, your stats, and your persuasion ability will be compared to those of your conversation partner. The character with the highest persuasion ability will likely win. Uh, we should probably go off of intelligence? Tell him there is no mutiny. You almost died at the woman's hands. Yes! Rix looks to his companion, who then looks to you. They drop their hands to their sides. Go on, then. Find a place to hide and stay there. Ha! We encounter some magisters who have survived this far. We convinced them to let us pass. Listen, I want Rix to be able to get to who's ever waiting for them at Fort Troy. I forgot their name. Paintings, from what I remember, used to sell for a lot. That has no value. Okay, because it's badly damaged. Get the heck out of here. Also, I remember in the first game, there would sometimes be, like, buttons hid behind, uh, paintings like that. What up, puppy? Not long before this thing snaps into splinters. Poison arrow, bowstring, bottle of beer. Let's set them off. I don't think we're in a real rush. Ooh, we can maybe get a lot of money from that. Let's take that. Forgery of a painting. Are you worth anything? Nope. I guess it would tell us on this screen. Crafting screen. Select or drag two items into the crafting slots and hit the combine button. Interesting. How about a bottle of beer? And... Uh, an empty potion bottle. Earth essence. We'll come back to that. There's a crafting system. What in blazes? Something's pounding on the hull. Yeah, it's probably not a not a good thing. Painted recently, judging from its pungent scent. You recognize the symbol immediately for what it is a warning of death fog within. You press your palm against the door to open it. The wood feels neither cold nor warm, but simply gray. The crimson drains from your hand, and you are left numb. Mm, yank your hand away. I'm good. I'm good. I don't think we need to mess with whatever the heck that is. Let's just go over here. I need to get off this Uh Note that a poison surface has been created in your vicinity. You can burn it away with fire, but perhaps it can be of use. Vicious void lane. Um, okay. From what I remember, if you had fire hit a poison surface, it blew up. Ooh, actually, hold on. So this Conjure Incarnate, we get a elemental that matches whatever we summon it from. Or like what surface we summon it on. So we can summon it. So it should become like a poison golem? 
poison infused. Yep. Okay. And elemental totem. Target a ground surface and conjure a totem of the corresponding element. Each turn, this totem will fire a projectile at enemies in sight. We have, looks like, two ability points left. I don't think we really need to move here. So, yeah, why not? Let's summon a... Oops. Elemental totem. Cool. And now we get to control our little... Little dude here. So, what do we got? Let's see. They are weak to water. Weak to air. I don't have either of those things. They have no talents. They have no armor. And they are poisoned. Let's poison this one. And then we still got one AP left. Provoke. I guess this is an AoE. Haha! <laughs> Get him, little whatever you are. Oh, it's this turn again. What do we got? Poison darts. Cast a magical poison start that does 9 to 10 poison damage. Sweet. <laughs> no! My... That was my best friend! Damn you! <laughs> Wait, we can summon another one of these? What about if we summon it on blood? I don't think that counts. Or maybe it does? Oh no, it does! Look! The totem is different! Ah, oh, Blood totem. Cool. Very cool. Then let's do dimensional bolts. Oh! We destroyed our blood totem. So the bolts created a lightning surface. Okay, well, what if we do another totem on a lightning blood pile? Electric totem. Um. One turn. Is, okay, so we do not want to walk over electric. We're, we'll take damage for no reason. So, let's end our turn here. Kick ass! Alright, you, you need to go. There we go. Fireball scroll. Let's not go that way. Wait, why are we slowed? Uh, let's go loot this thing. Although there is a bunch of poison around it. Maneuver and... That means there's still a chance. Let's go! Where's the lifeboat? There it is. Wait for me, friends! I'm coming! Shut your trap, kid. Children and dwarves first, just like the old stories say. I don't think the old stories say that. The dwarf yanks at one of the nearby ropes to no avail. It's like there were other people down there. We... we need to help them. You see those tentacles, kid? It's time for getting the hell out of here. If we're role playing, I don't think we would go back down there for these people. I really want to, though. I'm torn.
We were a general, so we're not going to be a coward. Yeah, we'll call the dwarf yellow belly coward. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's a ladder right over there. You can go straight down. You're gonna be the death of us, you hear? The thing is, if we rescue these people, they will be indebted to us, right? That means they will feel obliged to help us in the future. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, uh, we're, we're alright, we're alright. Let's create a surface first. Let me create some special... Is that frost? And let's create a Conjure Incarnate. Oh, I, I don't think I got him on the actual thing. It's not infusing anything. Let us move over here and taunt. I thought Void Woken was supposed to be scary. I faced worse. Okay, so what the heck did that do? Hmm. Let the games begin. Okay. She went all out. So now that fight's still going on because we're not close enough to be in it. Away. The sea's hungry. We don't have much time. They smell even worse dead than alive. Let's head above decks for some. We make a pretty good team. That was cool. to speak, but can only gape as she clutches her neck, trying to stem the bleeding of a gushing wound. She could still help us. She's just a magister, and if we get to Fort Joy with the magister and we help to save her life, let me make things easier. With jagged movements, she raises her clenched fist and holds out a length of cloth, soaked with some kind of strong-smelling tincture. Let's try and stem the bleeding. Blood quickly soaks through the cloth. Magister Siwan's mouth opens and closes, her eyes wide in terror. Uh, try to use it like a tourniquet? Blood pours out from around the bandage. Magister Siwan reaches out to you, her hand flailing. Uh, hold the cloth tighter. It's working. The pressure is stemming the flow of blood. Siwan clutches your arm, her eyes locked with yours. Something within the ship snaps. The floorboards shudder. Mm, we're already here. Help her stand. Siwan struggles to her feet, clinging to you tightly. The ship lets out a deep groan, then cracks. You came, friends. You die in the ship. We just say what we need to get out of here.
I have plans for you, child. Excuse me. Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard now presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity. High Judge Orivan. Well, we're alive. That's a good thing. Well, that was a bit of a rough and tumble journey. I suppose I'm the lone survivor. Which is entirely appropriate, if you ask me. <laughs> Damn. Well, you know what? I think this is going to be a good spot to end this first episode, everybody. So thanks for watching. Wait, where's this waypoint? This? Maybe? Um, so again, thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next episode. Take care.